serving South Florida, this is WTVJ NBC 6 News. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jill Beach. The time right now is 9 o'clock on this Sunday, December 24th, Christmas Eve. Thanks for joining us. Here's what we have for you over the next hour. If you still haven't picked out those perfect gifts for those special people in your life, don't fret. You still have a few more hours to wrap up your holiday shopping. And speaking of time, just in case, you need to send that last-minute present. We're going to tell you which post offices are open on this Christmas Eve. Plus, Central Florida firemen are trying to contain a wildfire, which has forced some residents to leave their homes. But first, we are going to check the Sunday weather with Leslie. As we look at Christmas Eve morning, it's really, up. it's really here. Santa's almost here. Really here. Yeah, he's en route right now. He's flying through wind chill factors, and when he gets out into South Florida, and he's going to be dealing with some ominous looking skies, the bearers of rain. We do have some shower activity. In fact, I'll get to the maps and I'll show you what's going on as far as in between the Florida Straits. Can we take that, Scott? Can we get to the maps? There we go. He's been falling asleep out there. I'm just kidding, Scott. There we are. Look at the wet weather all along the southeast coast, just skirting the area in and around Broward, Miami Dade, getting a fresh dose of some light sprinkles. And not so much Broward, but en route are some light showers, and that activity will continue through the morning hours, even for Monroe County, up in the upper keys, drifting downward southward and to the west. That's where you'll, you'll notice much of the shower activity, and embedded in there where you see yellow are thunderstorms. And I don't rule out that possibility through the course of the morning, just because the air is very unstable and there is an abundant supply of moisture. Once again this morning, still getting pumped up from the Western Caribbean through Cuba into the southeast coast, and in fact, also on the west coast. So the forecast today, cloudy, continued breezy. In fact, we've had gusts clocked as high as 28 miles an hour out there. So it's a blustery morning, and that will continue, by the way, through the course of the day. But improvements are on the way, and we do have a lot to talk about elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Wind chills and the solar eclipse coming up, and of course the game day forecast up at Foxborough Stadium. And we don't get snow at Christmas, but we're getting some precipitation. Yeah. Okay, Leslie, thank you very much. As we start the news, topping our story, no longer just days, but hours until Christmas arrives. Shoppers and store owners are taking advantage of every last minute. NBC6 reporter Ben Schmidt has more from some of the busiest stores in South Florida. It's never stop, never stop. Yeah, nice. We don't finish work around the clock. If the store manager at this Walmart looks a little worn out, it's for good reason. He's at ground zero of last-minute holiday shopping madness, possibly the busiest store around. And the busiest Walmart in the country? That's right. You better believe it. All right, thanks. Late at night, with time running out before Christmas, it's standing room only inside. And outside, the parking lot is jammed up as well. You will always need something extra. You always find more friends at Christmas time. At other South Florida malls, the Aventura Mall and the International Mall in Northwest Miami-Dade, sales are up. Last-minute rush, definitely on. We're actually up 7% from last year. And even though the the country country retail growth as a whole is is down, our growth has been very steady and current. And retailers and merchants are are very happy. Sales have been approximately around 50% over last year up, having a great year. Um, can't complain. Uh, a scooter to do a number one seller. Electronics, a big seller of video games in big demands. <laughs> but elsewhere, sales have been lackluster this holiday season. One national group says sales are down 8% this year compared to last. The stock market's ups and downs are blamed. Shoppers staying away from upscale retailers high-priced items. Many hoping all of this last-minute rush will help. So, here we are just hours before Christmas, and the manager of this Walmart says this is the busiest store in the country. What does that say about South Florida shoppers? Well, he says they wait until the last possible minute. 2,000 of the customers going through that store each hour. Reporting in West Miami-Dade, Benno Schmidt, NBC6. Well, for all you procrastinators out there, here's some more good news for you. Several post offices are open today so that you can mail your last-minute cards, letters, and packages. The Postal Service says its doors are open to help sort out the more than 20 billion pieces of mail 
sent out during the holiday season. So, if you want your Christmas cards to get out on time, believe it or not, you can still do it for a few extra bucks. You are suggested to use Express Mail for guaranteed Christmas Day delivery. Here are some of the locations that are open today. The Avenue of the Americas, Pinecrest Town and Country, Sawgrass University in Hollywood, and Palm Village in Hialeah. These locations are open at various times today, so for more information, call 1-800-ASK-USPS. Well, we know that malls and local shopping centers are going to be flooded with last-minute shoppers, so let's take a live look at one of the roadways this morning. We're going to take you outside, and there you're getting a look at an interchange up at the county line from our Roll Ford Cam, Sky Cam Network camera. It does not look too busy. I think those parking lots are probably already full. But if you have family and friends from the Northeast coming in for the holidays by train, you're going to expect them to be late. Down power lines have caused major problems at the Amtrak hub in New Jersey. That is forcing delays of up to 12 hours across the Northeast corridor. We had very little information. It was very frustrating. And what they, we ran out of food. After a while, they ran out of food. The toilets were not working. We were told how long were you on that train? Ten hours. Ten hours. Train officials say the problems were caused by a tree branch that knocked down a high voltage wire. Closer to home, a fire completely destroys two tractor trailers. The blaze broke out yesterday in northwest Miami-Dade, police say. A worker was cutting off a door on a truck when the sparks ignited the insulation in the trailer. The fire forced the evacuation of the employees at a nearby building, but luckily, no one was hurt. And a 12-year-old boy may get to go home for Christmas after getting shot in the chest. The boy was in his own Southwest Miami-Dade home Friday night when a random bullet broke through a window and hit him in the chest. He was airlifted to the hospital and underwent surgery. He's expected to go home either today or tomorrow. Neighbors say they often hear shots in the area, typically from a nearby canal. Well, there's lots more straight ahead on today in South Florida. Firefighters are trying to get a brush fire under control in Central Florida. The story's coming up. And will Puerto Rico become a state, an independent country, or remain as a U.S. Commonwealth? We'll tell you what President Clinton has decided to do. That's later on today in South Florida. But first, here's Leslie. Thank you, Jill. And it certainly is cloudy, windy, and a bit wet in some places. I'll show you where and let you know what the day, as well as Christmas Day, has in store for you right after this. Mondays. You investigate, what did you call it? Right. Miraculous phenomena. They're actual miracles? Discover the difference between a mystery and a miracle. When this cloth is healing people, they don't think she's going to make it through the night. NBC Mondays, all new episodes of Mysterious Ways. And we've stumbled across something that's going to save millions of lives. This summer's phenomenal hit. It's 2,000 years old. All new Mysterious Ways, NBC Monday, New Year's Day, 8, 7 Central. My dear friends, this great Jubilee year 2000, honoring the birth of Jesus Christ, closes with the celebration of Epiphany on January 7th. Like the wise men who sought, found, and worshipped Jesus, and then returned home, we must now get on with our ordinary lives. But the star of Bethlehem must continue to shine in our lives. Be wise men and women. Continue the search for Jesus. Share the good news with others, and keep him ever in your hearts. No matter what you need, you can count on dependable, long-lasting Chevy trucks. Now you can make your money count by leasing a 2001 Chevy Blazer two-door as low as $199 a month with $1674 due at signing. That's as low as $199 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. So make your money count at your Chevy dealer now. The NBC6 Neighborhood Weather Hits is brought to you by Bell Sounds, only on NBC6. And at 10 after 9, it's Christmas in Key West. There's a sailboat just off the southernmost city from our Skycam Network Hotel, La Concha Camera. It looks a little windy out there. I'm sure Leslie will talk about that in a moment. But brush fires continue to rage in central Florida. The 500-acre blaze is burning in Haines City, Florida. That's about 30 miles southwest of Orlando. 
So far, no one has been hurt, but at least one house has caught on fire. Officials say it may have started from a car fire. Firefighters hope to have the blaze contained sometime today. Now, Leslie, there's something very interesting happening to us, something that only happens about every 300 years. That's right, Jill. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, everybody, once again. That's right. The solar eclipse tomorrow at 1238 locally here in Miami, and we'll be able to see about 32% of the sun that will be covered up and by then those clouds that you see outside right now will have cleared up a bit so we will see the sun peak out from time to time enough to where we potentially could see that solar eclipse very exciting stuff but look here at our uh, coconut grove camera complements of sky cam network and you see those sprinkles coming on down in fact shower activity which started just about two hours ago or so it's been very breezy as well gusts clocked about 28 miles an hour the breezy conditions will persist today as will the clouds but the wet weather is forecast to lighten up through the course of the day and so by the afternoon hours we'll have less of an opportunity for wet weather and i'll explain the hows the whys and the wheres in just a moment right now let's get to our current temperatures outside it's 68 up and down south East Coast for Fort Lauderdale, Miami, as well as Key West, and 69 degrees right now in Palm Beach. Now, we'll get up to about 73 degrees or so, depending on how much wet weather does fall, because, of course, that always cools things off, combined with the clouds as well, keeping the sun blocked locked out there. Therefore, of course, we don't get as much sun, we don't get as much heat, but you will feel the moisture. The reason being, it's tropical in nature. And as we look here at the, uh, the Western Caribbean, indeed, that's the origin for all that moisture, an abundant supply of which for the last three days has been pumped northward our way, and now even farther northward. And so what we have is a stationary front that is just not budging. It's lingering around the Florida Straits. That's where most of the wet weather right now is contained, although you'll notice here now it's beginning to skirt the southeast coast. Coast. We also have a big batch of high pressure, a very strong pressure gradient, and the clockwise rotation around it is drawing in the northeasterly flow, but the pressure differences between what is beginning to form as low pressure here, you see the counterclockwise rotation, the difference of pressure between those two is making for those gusty winds that you see out there, uh, that which I'll describe as a tight squeeze, if you will, and that's why it's going to be very windy, continue through the course of the day, but the good news is, as the slope continues to develop, that's going to be the reason why it's finally going to budge that stationary front by tomorrow out of harm's way. That's why the weather will slowly improve as we move toward Christmas Day. You'll see, though, there are some pretty potent thunderstorms in there just to the southeast of the lower area of the island chain, so I don't rule out the possibility today we could see a rumble or two. Here on the future cast, very good news that it does indicate that by Monday into Christmas, that moisture is indeed moving off to the south and east, leaving us, yes, with some unsettledness in the skies, but there will be a... Uh, um, illustrated by clouds more so rather than wet weather for Christmas Day. Elsewhere in the country, perhaps you have uh, relatives or friends that are up in the northeast. It's not a bad day up there. This is a big uh, area of low pressure that's producing some lake effect snow for the Great Lakes on top of the many, many inches. In fact, it's a new record up in Buffalo, New York, just for the season. Winter started, what, just a few days ago, and for the season so far, they've already gotten 80 inches of snow on the ground. So very much a wintry day. Santa's going to have to be flying through those snowflakes in the upper Great Lakes. Meanwhile, in the Big Apple, in and around Central Park, not too bad today. Temperatures in the low 30s. It's tomorrow on Christmas Day. They could see some snow as well falling from the sky. And there are the highs that are forecast. It's going to get up to 5 in the Twin Cities and up to 18 degrees in Chicago today. It's going to be pretty windy, and you saw the snowfall that I just showed you on the radar. Now, for those of you wondering about the game, of course, kickoff time being 1 o'clock this afternoon up at Foxborough State. Stadium. The Dolphins taking on the Patriots. Of course, we wish them the best of luck. Our own John Garaldi is up there. He says he's going to be at the game rooting on his team, the Patriots. He's very much a Patriot fan. Partly cloudy skies by 1 o'clock. Temperature 30. So, yes, cool, but not as cold as it could be this time of year. Winds northwest turning to southwest at 5 to 10 knots before all is said and done. All right, we'll get back to the maps, and I'll show you what else is going on here. For the boaters today, not a nice day at all. Very rough out there. An advisory is posted 16 feet along the Gulf, 8 to 10 feet elsewhere. Very rough. Northeast at 25 knots, so very gusty, very stormy, and wet as anything out there. So you might want to stay indoors away from your boat today for the forecast. Cloudy, breezy, scattered showers mainly in the morning. The clouds will linger through the course of the day with a daytime high of 73. For tonight, lots more clouds, less of a shower chance. 67 is your overnight low. 
And for the next six days, yes, it will be breezy today. Tomorrow you'll notice it'll start to clear out a bit. Temperatures remaining in the mid to upper 70s through the week. Not too hot, not too cold, and the weather slowly improving as we move through our holiday week. And that's it for now anyway. Jill, I'll toss it back to you. Thank you, Leslie. Well, many of you have most likely put up your Christmas trees by now, and some of you may even have more than one tree in your homes. But what about 27? One woman in Memphis, Tennessee, did just that. She says she has a serious Christmas tree collection, and she puts one in just about every room. Believe it or not, there's even one in the bathroom. And tonight, her grand total will jump to 28. She says she plans on adding a live tree in honor of Christmas Eve. And still ahead on today in South Florida, President Clinton is creating a task force to determine the future of Puerto Rico. We'll tell you what that's all about coming up. And a former inmate owes his possible freedom to an unlikely source. Details when Today in South Florida comes right back. NBC6 senior correspondent Mike Siemens broke the story. The Port of Miami and Broward Port Everglades, world famous for pleasure cruises and cargo commerce, each has become a port of crime. Uncovering a smuggling operation in your backyard. But it didn't end there. Now, the story is getting national attention. In New York, this is NBC Nightly News. Credibility, integrity, knowledge of our community. All the things you'd expect from South Florida's most experienced news station, NBC6. This holiday season, Modern Age can supply every dreamer's wish list. Shop the holiday sale for quality furniture at very special prices. From sofas to beds, curios to sleepers, hundreds of items have been drastically reduced. This luxurious dining room is perfect for entertaining. And there's more. Enjoy no payments and no interest until 2002. Make your holiday wishes come true. Stop in today. Modern Age, where beautiful homes begin. Here's a nice little number we've been working on. Two point nine percent APR financing for thirty-six months on all new four-cylinder records, only for a limited time. Now that should be real music to your ears. Oh yeah. The hour is late, the story is breaking. Is this any way to pick a president? There's so much going on. How do you get the whole picture? Firestone on board. Surrender early on. USS Cole. Two Israeli soldiers are dead. MSNBC. Connected with the number one name in news. On TV, on the web. When news breaks, we bring you every side of the story. You get it fair, you get it first. Nobody brings you the whole picture like MSNBC. I'm Chief Herman Price. If you suspect your smoke alarms are around 10 years old, it's time to be safe and replace. Your smoke alarms work around the clock, and over 10 years, that's more than 87,000 dollars without a break. And they gather dirt and debris. Consider this. 90% of home fires that kill occur in homes without working smoke alarms are no alarm at all. Don't be caught unprotected. Be sure to replace smoke alarms on every level, in bedrooms and hallways. Be safe. Replace. Just weeks before leaving office, President Clinton is creating a task force to decide what to do with Puerto Rico. The committee will study whether Puerto Rico should become a state, an independent country, or continue as a U.S. Commonwealth. The president says the task force will continue discussions after he leaves office and will report to President-elect Bush by May 1st. Also in Puerto Rico, many are praying for peace on the tiny island of Vieques. The movement to end U.S. bombing exercises on the island has taken on a religious tone this holiday season. Protesters say the bombing has damaged the environment there, stunted economic growth, and endangered the lives of residents. The Navy argues Vieques is vital to America's national defense because of its location. The district attorney in Oklahoma will not take part in the prosecution of the man charged with the Oklahoma bombing, but his office can. Back in October, a judge ordered that district attorney, Bob Macy, and his assistants could not try the case against Terry Nichols because of several, quote, 
on professional comments. But the state appeals court reversed part of that decision yesterday, saying a judge could not bar Macy's subordinates from trying the case. Macy got involved after Nichols was convicted in a federal court, but did not get the death penalty. Instead, Nichols was sentenced to life in prison for the blast that killed 168 people. A Texas inmate who was serving a life sentence for a crime he didn't commit got his freedom from an unlikely source, and now he owes his life to a man who doesn't even have a legal degree. Reporter Phil Johnston has the story. The attacker walked into the Pizza Hut, raped Nancy DePriest, shot her in the back of the head. The day this report aired in Austin, Texas in 1988, police didn't know who killed Nancy DePriest. Even after Chris Ochoa confessed and was later convicted of the crime, it appears police still didn't know who really did it. I just uh, came on the case in September. Uh, Enter Corey Tennyson, a 22-year-old St. Paul native and second-year law student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, dear Wisconsin Innocence Project, I'm innocent. Uh, it was June of 1999 when Chris Ochoa wrote a letter claiming his confession was false and had come only after Austin police officers said this to him. You know that the Mexican guy always goes down for this and the white guy walks. If you don't work with us, you're going to get the death penalty. They tapped his arm and showed him where the needle would go when he uh, would be executed. Ochoa confessed, testified against an innocent friend, and as a result was given a life sentence instead of death. Then, in 1996, a letter to the editor appears from a man named Akeem Marino, in which he said, I killed Nancy DePriest. That letter is ignored, but two years later, another letter from Marino, this time to the governor of Texas. The letter said, Dear Governor Bush, uh, in 1988, I killed Nancy DePriest. Nothing I don't know came of that letter either. But when Corey Tennyson and his classmates at the UW Law School learned of the new murder confession, along with Ochoa's denial, they knew they had a case. And they were right. Basically, the DNA test uh, excluded Chris Ochoa and Richard Danziger and included Achim Josef Marino. If all goes according to plan, Chris Ochoa will walk free on January 16th. And the second year law student who helped get him to that point will be there too. For me, while all this press hoo-ha has been exciting, uh, meeting his family and welcoming him home, being on the plane with him, letting him have you know, a good steak and a beer for the first time in 12 years, I think that's the ticket item. That's the stuff. And that was Phil Johnston reporting. And despite his success defending his client, Corey Tennyson hopes to become a prosecutor. And coming up right here, forecaster Leslie Nelm takes a look at our weather. And I'll have news headlines for you, including we'll show you how a local doctor is making the lives of some area children a lot brighter. And did the FBI withhold information about a possible showdown between Cuba and American exile groups? Details coming up. And later on today in South Florida, we're going to give you all the details of the upcoming Junior Orange Bowl Parade and the International Junior Orange Bowl Festival. But first, here's a look at last night's lottery numbers. If you want to succeed in South Florida, it pays to read Business Monday, covering business news from the Keys to Palm Beach. Keep up with the latest on local industries, interest, and finance rates, plus ways to move ahead in your business or career. And now Business Monday is bigger and better, with columns on international trade and business newsmakers, a special pullout section on technology, personal finance, and reviews on new products and business books. Make it your business to read Business Monday, only in the Herald. At the last minute, at surprising her, at your service merchandise. For your jewelry, for your face. All fine jewelry and all diamond solitaires are on sale. Surprise her with half carat diamond earrings, now $399.90. Quarter carat diamond earrings, just $99.90. More choices, better prices, guaranteed. At your service. Is this any way to pick a president? With so much going on. How do you get the whole picture? 
Firestone to court. Surrender Elion. USS Cole. Two Israeli soldiers are dead. MSNBC. Connected with the number one name in news. On TV, on the web. When news breaks, we bring you every side of the story. You get it fair, you get it first. Nobody brings you the whole picture like MSNBC. Right on the set. Who made them, boss? Action. 18 million homeless dogs and cats will find their way to animal shelters this year, hoping for a warm home. You can help. Collect homeless Homer and Morris symbols from specially marked pet food packages. Participating shelters will redeem your symbols to receive much needed funds. For more information on the Homeless Pets Program, please call. That's a wrap. Oh, another hard day's work. With more than 50 years experience serving South Florida, this is WTVJ NBC6 News. Outside for a look in. Is that Papa Nicole's? It sure is. It's it sure sure is. is. Still see those wet roads. That's too. right. It's a little slick. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jill Beach. The time right now is coming up on 9:27 as you get your Christmas Eve morning started. Leslie's here to tell you how the rest of the day is going to look. We know it's a little bit damp this morning. It's very damp. The skies are very dark. And look at the flag blowing from our Hotel Concha camp. It is very gusty out there. She and loves that flag. Day. <laughs> yeah, the wind that we could do without right now. But it does, certainly does add somehow to the festive feeling. It's better than snow, that's for sure. And uh, as we look at the satellite, you see the culprit for all the clouds and the wind and the moisture and the reason why much through the day today, at least the first part, we stand a pretty good chance of some scattered showers in and around the southeast coast, both for Broward, Miami-Dade, and in a moment I'll show you Monroe County. You see Broward is dry for the most part. But there's a few light sprinkles moving into Miami-Dade County, in and around Aventura, southwest into Opelika, Kendall, and on down the coast we go. In fact, in Monroe County, there's even some thunderstorms embedded in those areas. If my maps would advance for me, it's being uncooperative. There we go. For Key Largo, down south through Isla Mirada, also just to the south and east of Marathon, out over the open waters, we've got some thunderstorms rumbling around. I don't rule out that possibility for the rest of us through the course of the day. So, cloudy, breezy, scattered showers. The showers are forecast to lighten up quite a bit as we move through time into tonight. And if you are tired of the clouds and want to see a little sun, well, Santa will bring you a nice present because tomorrow things are going to be much improved, and I'll have that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Oh, it sounds like a good Christmas. See you in a minute, Leslie. Well, as we get set to enjoy Christmas Eve tonight, a South Florida doctor and local police are jumping into the holiday spirit. They played host to some underprivileged kids, so their holidays could be a little brighter. NBC6 reporter Whitney Casey has their story. Early holiday cheer for these youngsters. A Christmas party today in Plantation for dozens of underprivileged children, families, and patients of pediatrician Shirley Campbell Mogg, one of the party's organizers. Well, for me, it's really coming from deep within my heart. It's something I really wanted to do for these families. My patients and parents over the years have really stood by me. Dr. Mogg teamed up with a local storage company and the Plantation Police Department to make this Christmas one these children would never forget. Even though it's a little bit chilly today, it's nice to know that uh, all our hearts are nice and warm inside, seeing these kids having a great time. <laughs> Fun, food, games, and of course, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Santa even stopped by with a fire engine full of toys. Every eye on his sack of goodies, parents overjoyed with the smiles on their kids' face after seeing what Santa brought for them, excitement abound. Whitney Casey, NBC6. And for all you procrastinators out there, here's some good news for you. Several post offices are open today, so you can mail your last-minute cards, letters, and packages. The Postal Service says its doors are open to help sort out the more than 20 billion pieces of mail sent out during the holiday season. So... If you want your Christmas cards and presents to get out on time, believe it or not, they still can. You just have to spend a few extra bucks. You are suggested to use Express Mail for guaranteed Christmas Day delivery. Here are some of the locations that are open today. The Avenue of the Americas, Pinecrest, Town and Country, Sawgrass, 
University in Hollywood and Palm Village in Hialeah. Now these locations are open at various times today. So for more information call 1-800-ASK-USPS. In other news, White House advisors say the FBI knew about the deadly Brothers to the Rescue shootdown before it happened. Documents released during the Cuban spy trial show that the FBI intercepted messages between Havana and Cuban spies in South Florida. The messages warned of a possible conflict in 1996. However, the FBI did not release that information. The FBI declined to comment. The Cuban government shot down two Brothers to the Rescue planes in February 1996. However, the FBI did not release that information, and they have declined to comment. Now, with just a month before he leaves office, President Clinton is making one last push for Middle East peace. Mr. Clinton met with Israeli and Palestinian negotiators at the White House yesterday as violence and fear grips Bethlehem during this holy week. After five days of talks, the Palestinians appear discouraged. The Israelis are a bit more hopeful. Inevitably, differences remain, uh, but uh, I feel that uh, it was a, a very uh, encouraging uh, round of, uh, uh, of talks. It's been tough. It's been uh, difficult. The gaps are uh, there. As in years past, future control of Jerusalem's holy sites and the return of Palestinian refugees to Israel remain sticking points in the peace process. And right now, to help you plan your Christmas Eve day, here's Leslie. Good morning to you once again. It's just too bad that the folks over there fighting on Christmas, the irony of it. You know, the anger over there on a day when uh, we're all supposed to be very loving. Gosh, it's very, very sad. Well, for us here... Our weather is rather ominous looking out there. You'll see the clouds, you'll see the bearings of rain out there, through, at least through the morning hours. And the temperatures, though, as you're heading out, perhaps for your morning jog or out for a walk or to get that last-minute shopping done, bring your umbrella with you or wear a poncho if you're out for your walk or jog because we do potentially have some scattered showers, and I'll show you in a moment. The temperatures, meanwhile, holding steady in the upper 60s for Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and Key West. The thermometer reads 68 degrees right now, so it's not too chilly out there. The reason being, we do have tropical moisture that continues again for the third day in a row to drift on up from the Western Caribbean right through Cuba, in through the Bahamas, and much of it also right up halfway through the peninsula, even to the north of Lake Okeechobee, there are some clouds. Just now, though, I'd say in the last few hours have the showers begun, but they're very, very light in nature, and on the Doppler radar, you'll see that most of them are in the Florida Straits, just to the south and east of the island chain. Also, you'll notice the areas in red or yellow, that's where the rain is really coming down, and there are a few rumbles to be had out there, so I don't rule out the possibility we could see a thunderstorm or two, perhaps in and around uh, through the course of the day, but mainly in the morning hours. The reason is we do have the circulation. If you look at the Doppler, you can kind of see it beginning to form. That's the counterclockwise rotation and the beginning of a uh, low that is forming along the stationary front. And the reason why we've had the spillage of clouds the last few days all along the southeast coast is because the front isn't budging. However, this low that will form and is beginning to do so will help nudge it out of harm's way away from the South Florida coast through the course of the night tonight into tomorrow. In the meanwhile, expect the potential, though, for showers. But by Christmas Day night, you'll notice here on the future cast that moisture batch is moving to the south and east. That's why our day will improve tomorrow, more so with some clouds around. And the clouds will linger today, but the shower activity will lessen today and even more so of course, through the course of the night as that uh, low develops and the front moves out of our way. All right, let's look at what El Santa will have to deal with as he heads out to uh, give all the nice presents to the good girls and boys out there. This trough right here that you see bearing southward is going to be a big weather maker in the areas along the Gulf Coast states in Texas as well as Oklahoma and Arkansas. It's going to mix with Gulf moisture and Arctic air. So this is going to be a big weather story for these folks on Christmas Day. Meanwhile, you'll see that front starting to budge as we speak, but this cold Arctic air, again, it's been so brutal up there in the northern plains. And once again, the wind chill right now, or what the air feels like if it were to touch your open skin when you factor in the wind, minus 25 in Fargo, North Dakota, minus 22 is what it feels like up in the Twin Cities, and approaching minus 30 degrees below zero in and around the area of Ohio. So it's very, very chilly up there, but elsewhere, 
Here, it's not so nice out on the open waters, the reason being because of all the conditions I showed you. But uh, we do have an advisory posted, with waves up to 16 feet along the Gulf Stream, northeast at 25 knots, very windy through the course of the day, 8 to 10 feet elsewhere, very rough, a lot of white caps out there. For our forecast then, cloudy, breezy, scattered showers mainly in the morning, lightening up as we move through time. In fact, tonight you'll just see a slight shower chance, but lots of clouds lingering about. Not until tomorrow will Santa be able to... Uh, Get some sunshine in there. And by the way, if I didn't mention it, we do have a solar eclipse tomorrow. We'll be able to see through the sun and clouds. Tomorrow at 1238, you'll be able to see 32% of that solar eclipse, as we were talking about. It's the first time it's happened in 300 years. So a very, very exciting day ahead, Christmas Day, and of course the solar eclipse. So I'll be back with more coming up in a few minutes. Jill, back to you. Sounds great, Leslie. Thank you. And when we come back on Today in South Florida, we will explain why the Grinch is laughing all the way to the bank. And it is that time of year. We are in the midst of the largest international youth and arts festival. We will tell you much more about the 2000-2001 Junior Orange Bowl International Youth Festival, including the Junior Orange Bowl Parade, when we come back. No matter what you need, you can count on dependable, long-lasting Chevy trucks. Now you can make your money count by leasing a 2001 Chevy Blazer two-door as low as $199 a month with $1674 due at signing. That's as low as $199 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. So make your money count at your Chevy dealer now. Are you leaving town for a few days and concerned about where to park your car? Well, now you can relax. Park your car right in front of the airport at Airport Fast Park. We'll take you and your luggage directly to the airline of your choice in less than three minutes. Airport Fast Park will also pick you up and bring you back to your car. It's less expensive than parking at the airport and is patrolled 24 hours. Don't worry about parking when you're traveling. Airport Fast Park is there to serve you. Lejeune Road at Northwest 31st Street, 305-871-4669. Hello everyone, I'm Tony Segretto. And I'm Jennifer Velocity. We here at NBC6 are proud to tell you about our partnership with Tax 35. Now the most experienced news team in South Florida, along with the balanced, reliable news that you've come to expect from NBC6, can be seen on Tax 35. It's actually a partnership that brings NBC6 news to Tax 35 each weeknight at 7 and 11.30, while giving you another resource to stay informed. NBC6 News on Tax 35. See it each weeknight at 7 and 11.30. I love sports, but you gotta know what games are right for you. Same with computer and video games. That's why parents have to make sure each game is right for the kids. Now, check the rating. Every computer and video game has a rating symbol that tells you what age group the game is best for. There's also a content label that tells you what's in the game. When you check the rating, the control is in your hands. See? You gotta play the game that's right for you. The following is a message for all you last-minute shoppers. At TJ Maxx, we're still getting lots of new gifts in every day. So don't bother with picked-over department stores. Head to TJ's, where you can still find the gifts you want to give and they really want to get. Thanks, honey. Thanks, kid. <laughs> okay, Maggie. Now you open one. TJ Maxx, saving last-minute shoppers with new gifts every day. This is the 52nd year for the Junior Orange Bowl International Youth Festival. And while it started in October and it runs until March, we're all familiar with the Junior Orange Bowl Parade. In fact, I will be co-hosting it for the third year in a row. Next Friday night starts at 6.30. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But joining me right now is Paul Oligny, the Executive Director of the Junior Orange Bowl International Youth Festival. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, and thank you for having us. Oh, no, thanks for coming in. Because I think, I think Paul, people don't all realize how much is going on. And we are going to give a phone number in a couple of minutes. Okay. But there's much more to this festival than most people realize, because it goes on for months. It goes on for about six months. We have 24 events, and we start in uh, October with an equestrian event, mm -hmm. and then in March we have a gymnastics event. And who competes? I know it's for young people, but there are different age ranges, and, and they come from different countries, the participants, don't yes, they? Yes, we have about uh, 60 countries that are represented, 
and every state in the United States. Uh, we estimate there's about 18,000 kids that participate in the Junior Orange Bowl. The age group is between five years old up until about 19, and we fill a niche for, for the kids where they have an opportunity to shine, an opportunity to show what's important to them. What is different about this festival? Are there festivals like this in other communities, or is this unique? We are unique, and we are recognized that way throughout the world, and we are known as the world largest youth and sports festival. We're very proud of that. Now, you've been involved with it for a long time, but it's a, there are a lot of volunteers who work very, very hard on, on, on the, these events. Tell us a, a little bit about how it all comes together. We, have, we estimate there's about 1,000 volunteers total. And there's about a core a group. Thousand? Yeah. Wow. And so many people just come in for one day and help out, and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But there's a group of about 200 volunteers that make this work year in and year out. And they're so dedicated, it's like having a second job. And I'm in awe of them, and I'm grateful. <laughs> now, you just finished the tennis. Yes. The tennis competition. But now you started the, go you started the golf this, this week, this the week. day after Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Now, where does it take place? The golf takes place at the Biltmore Country Club. Can people go and watch? Oh, yes. And it's amazing to watch these kids because these are the future champions of the world. In the past, we've had Tiger Woods for two years, Mark Calavecchia. Yeah. And we know that the kids that are playing now will be the ones in the future. That's right, you've had Tracy Kerdike, uh, Nick Price, and we love to say Jose Maria Olazabal, right? You say that so well. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, t let's talk just a little bit about the girls' basketball, too. Now, that's something that happens down at the Kendall campus of Miami-Dade Community College, and that goes for uh, three days, too. Three days, and later in the week. Well, it will be next Saturday, and it's mm -hmm. amazing to see these kids play, and it's a joy to watch these young women how fantastic they are. Mm -hmm. and, and they're just looking for an opportunity to show what they're capable of doing. And of course, women's basketball is now just shining. So talking about shining, it's going to be quite a celebration. Now, it's a celebration is the theme for this year. And we have some video from last year's parade. And it all kicks off at uh, 6.30. Let's go. Here we go. There's the Coral Gables High School Band of Distinction. I remember that part from the script. Now, when, when folks go out, uh, they can still buy tickets for the grandstand, right? That is correct. And how much do those tickets cost? $12. $12. But you can also stand anywhere along Miracle Mile. And it's just a traditional children's parade. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we'll see this year. The Clydesdales, which mm -hmm. I absolutely love. We have um, the B Troop, which is uh, a cavalry group that is coming from Arizona. Mm -hmm. and 20 floats, a lot of them being built by the, the community and the young kids, which is very important because this shows the kids what they can do. Mm -hmm. And in one of my favorite moments, there's always one moment where there's a child that's in the middle of the street and, and freezes, and it's their moment in the spotlight. And because this is for the kids. This is for the children. Now, if you want to get some more information, and it's a lot of fun, don't miss it. It's in Coral Gables. There it is, the Junior Orange Bowl Festival. About all the activities, call 305-662-1210. And come by and say hello to me right in front of City Hall. If you come by a little before 630. Thank you so much, Paul. We really had fun having you on. And I will see you Friday. Thank you. Good luck. Well, it's either sink or swim for the Miami Dolphins as the Fins get ready to take on the New England Patriots. Details come up for you in this morning's sports. Now here's Leslie. Thank you, Jill. And for those of you heading out on your last, last, last minute shopping, let's bring your umbrella with you because the rain that did not fall till this morning will very much fall for much of the morning and the early afternoon hours. But I'll have your nice forecast for Christmas Day coming up right after this. The Alien Gonzalez Saga. Dan Marino's retirement, the battle for the White House. These are just some of the big stories NBC6 covered this year. Now we want you to vote for the story you thought had the biggest impact on South Florida. Log on to NBC6.net, find the link, and cast your vote. The six most popular stories will be featured in a special NBC6 year-end report. I'm hungry!
performance of his career. Oscar should shine on him. All the pretty horses. Rated PG-13. In theaters everywhere tomorrow. Tune in to NBC6's Friday Midday News and see Master Chef Klaus from the School of Culinary Arts at the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale share his cooking secrets with you. Log in to NBC6.net today for recipes, culinary tips, and more from Chef Klaus. Get connected to your community with the all-new, easier-to-use NBC6.net. All the information you want to tap into is right here. News, classifieds, restaurants, weather, and everything in between. We're so confident that we're teaming up with Window.com to give you the chance each day to win $500, a thousand on Sundays, just for logging on. For your chance at the cash, log on to win.nbc6.net. NBC6.net, your connection to the South Florida community. Sunday Sports Final, tonight at 11.20, brought to you by Tamiami Chrysler G. NBC6, 101.5 Light FM and the Miami Herald invite you to save $6 on tickets to opening nights of the greatest show on earth. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey, playing National Car Rental Center and Miami Arena. In sports, it's all on the line for the Miami Dolphins, and it's all net for the Heat. Guy Rawlings has this and more in this morning's sports. Good morning, folks. The Heat at 500 after 28 games. Pat Riley says that has a lot to do with the tough early season schedule. Miami playing its 12th back-to-back -back game at New Jersey last night, which doesn't seem to bother Eddie Jones. 31 on Friday night. EJ picking up right where he left off. Steal, lay in. Heat with an early two-point lead. Another steal for Eddie. Coast to coast for the smash. Heat up eight. This time, Eddie running a curl route for the throwdown in traffic. And how about a step back, Jay? Mr. Jones making it a blockbuster night. Another 31 points. The Nets winning the battle of the boards. Four offensive rebounds on this one play before Kenyon Martin puts his stamp on it. Uh, right there. Bad news for Dan Marley, though. Just off the injured list. Could be right back on it last night, tweaking it again. Ryan Brant's health just fine with the traffic jam. Grant, 18. Mason contributing a double-double. And Hardaway laughing his way to 15 points. Heat win, 86-80. to 80. Power play, really? To the ice. Katsy Washington, long night for Trevor Kidd. Panthers down one in the second. Caps with a two-man advantage. Callie Johansson scores his second of the year. 3-1 Capitals. Florida answers Mike Sillinger. Sets up Brett Hedekin from the point. Slapper. Cats trail 3-2. With five minutes to go in the second. Oates hits Chris Simon in front of the net. All alone. He backhands it home. Four assists for Oates. Eight power plays on the night for Washington. Panthers lose again. 5-3. The Dolphins hoping the third time's a charm. Miami needed wins the past two weeks to guarantee a playoff spot, but came up short, short rather, both times. Miami can erase the setbacks and not only clinch a postseason berth, but win the division. All that stands in their way, the 5-10 and ten Patriots today in New England. We're in a great position. We still control our destiny. We win, we win the East, which is a goal to where we've uh, Wanted to be from the start of the season. Everybody's disappointed that you know we dropped two at home, but uh, you know we still control our own destiny right now. And if we get a win this weekend, we're in pretty good shape. And I think uh, everybody's tried to forget about that those last two games and really uh, you know put all our effort into this weekend uh, getting a win. Gator Hoops, Florida hosting American University. Keep your eye on number 10, Brett Nelson, off the steal, breaks coast to coast, dribbles behind the back for the lay-in. That's fancy. Justin Hamilton on backup picking pockets, puts it in spin cycle. Yeah, hit the score. Now how about a little do at Hamilton, a one-man SWAT team. Nelson finishing on the other end. The Gators fast break onto a 34-7 run. Florida grounds the Eagles 76-33. And that's a look at sports. I'm Guy Rawlings. Happy holidays. Thank you, Guy. Well, NBC6 is the place for all your weekend sports action. Tune in to the Dave Wonstadt Show this morning at 11.30. And you can get all the day's sports scores and highlights tonight on Sports Final right here on NBC6. Are you looking for something to do today besides shopping? Here are some ideas in Sunday's community calendar. Get in the holiday spirit and take part in the U.S. Marine Corps to Toys for Tots program. You can drop off and unwrap new toy from now until the end of the year at any McDonald's restaurant in South Florida. All the toys will be donated to children here in our community. 
Current editors is an art and new gallery focusing on Haitian culture. The Jack Mal Gallery and Cultural Center, named after a town in Haiti, features pieces by internationally renowned artists, live music, crafts, and dance lessons. The gallery is located at 2301 Biscayne Boulevard in Miami, and it is open every day from 11 a.m. until 9, admissions free. For more information, call 305-576-0121. One of classical music's greatest performers and greatest comedians passed away. Victor Borka died in his sleep Friday night at his home in Greenwich, Connecticut. During his career, he would perform more than 100 nights a year, sometimes as a pianist and sometimes as a conductor, but almost always as a self-proclaimed clown comedian. Borka was 91 years old. Meantime, in Chicago, mourners paid their respects to late gospel blues singer Roebuck Pop Staples. Staples died Tuesday morning at the age of 85. Pop Staples was born in Drew, Mississippi, and went on to become one of the most eminent voices in American soul, blues, gospel, and folk music. He was the patriarch of the Chicago-based Staples Singers, which featured his daughters Mavis, Cleo, and Yvonne. The group had mid-1970s pop soul hits such as Respect Yourself, Heavy Makes You Happy, and I'll Take You There. The family was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year. And on a lighter note, also people in the news, Jim Carrey is stealing the year at the box office. Moviegoers continue to flock to, to, flock to the theaters this season to see How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And the latest box office totals prove the character is looking greener than ever. The Grinch has taken over the highest grossing movie of 2000, taking in more than $216 million. Experts predict the movie will finish its run with about 250 million big ones in the bank. Also in entertainment news, the Dixie Chicks are taking a page from this presidential race and are asking for a recount. The country music industry tallied up top grossing concert tours and placed the Dixie Chicks, who raked in nearly $47 million, at number two behind Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. But a spokesman for the group says they have not conceded since they only fell short by $67,000. But don't worry, Florida won't be involved in this one. The Chicks are sure they won the Sunshine State because they performed one more night here than McGraw and Hill. And the musical group Destiny's Child is in the middle of a sweet deal. They're going commercial with a fashion company, Candies. Destiny's Child signed a one-year contract to promote an 80s retro collection. The new line will be introduced this spring. Up next, forecaster Leslie Mellon joins us with a final look at the weather. Plus, Santa has a new form of transportation. We'll tell you what that's all about in just a moment. But first, here's another look at last night's lottery numbers. Cash 3, 798, play 4, 1364, Fantasy 5, 23, 22, 20, 13, 9, the motto 37, 34, 47, 8, 29, 27. Mondays. Yeah, you investigate, what did you call it? Any miraculous phenomena? They're actual miracles? Discover the difference between a mystery and a miracle. This cloth is healing people. They don't think she's going to make it through the night. NBC Mondays, all new episodes of Mysterious Ways. And we've stumbled across something that's going to save millions of lives. This summer's phenomenal hit. It's 2,000 years old. All new Mysterious Ways. NBC Monday, New Year's Day, 8, 7 Central. Vista Memorial Gardens is the largest funeral home in Dade and Broward counties and has been under the same management for the last 41 years. Vista has the largest mausoleum program under construction in Dade and Broward counties. Vista was the first to operate a funeral home within the cemetery grounds. Call Vista today at 305-821-1421 or visit our website to learn more about our pre-needs programs. Call Vista today and let us help you ease the burdens on your loved ones. Day out, you know you can always count on Chevrolet. And right now, you can make your
your money count by leasing a 2001 Chevy Impala as low as $259 a month with $1618 due at signing. That's $259 a month with $1618 due at signing. Something this good, you gotta see for yourself. So make your money count at your local Chevy dealer today. It's the party of a lifetime this New Year's Eve. Billboard live on the beach in concert. The B-52s. Beach. The B-52s. Plus four tours. And breaking with Kamani Marley. Guest DJs from around the world. Incredible fireworks. Tickets only $75. VIP tickets 305-379-7118. Late, the story is breaking. Is this any way to pick a president? There's so much going on. How do you get the whole picture? Firestorm on board. Surrender Elliot. USS Cole. Two Israeli soldiers are dead. MSNBC. Connected with the number one name in news. On TV, on the web. When news breaks, we bring you every side of the story. You get it fair, you get it first. Nobody brings you the whole picture like MSNBC. So it's Christmas Eve and the shopping mall parking lots are probably full, but the question is, Leslie, are they full of people with umbrellas for the holiday? <laughs> Hopefully, and batten down the hatches because as we look out over Key West with our Hotel La Concha Cam, you can see those breezes, very gusty out there. In fact, it's going to be a blustery day as it's been for the last couple of days. And as we zoom out a little more, you can get a good view of those clouds and there's the angel taking that wind, hopefully with it by tomorrow. Anyway, things will be much improved. Right now, the temperatures aren't bad. It's very mild out there. We've got that tropical air mass still drifting northward. That's why it's 68 in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, as well as Key West, which is relatively warm for this time of year. And uh, I'll zoom a little bit forward for you and show you that moisture. This has been the weather picture, actually, for the last few days. And once again, it continues. You can see it just being pumped forward up from the Western Caribbean. That's why we have the clouds. That's why we have the unstable atmosphere. And the reason why we'll have good shower activity potential through the course of the morning. The wet weather will improve with the day, and the clouds will disperse through tomorrow for Christmas Day. The reason being, there's a low-pressure area that's starting to form that will nudge the front that hasn't moved for the last few days out of the way of uh, the southeast coast. But you can see in the Florida Strait, lots of wet weather out there and a few thunderstorms tucked in there. On the future cast, by Monday night, indeed, the moisture is moved off the southeast coast. For the boaters today, beware. Very rough out there. Treacherous. To say the least, advisory is posted 16-foot waves along the Gulf Stream, very rough, and 8 to 10 feet elsewhere. 76 is your surf high, cloudy, breezy, scattered showers today. More of the same tonight, but a less of a shower chance tonight, and tomorrow, partly cloudy skies. And overnight, Santa hopefully will bring his uh, umbrella with him, because he's going to get a little bit wet along with Rudolph's red nose, you know? Have a good day, everybody. Merry Christmas. We plan to have a great day, Leslie. Well, here's a question. Could Santa be trading in his reindeer for a new form of transportation this morning? Well, the jolly old guy took a ride in a helicopter and, get this, tried out a cannon yesterday in Fort Myers. The chances are he won't be giving up Dasher and Dancer. <laughs> Anytime soon, while well, at the event, a few kids also got early Christmas presents. They were even given a Sony PlayStation just for showing up. Those are pretty Santa's fine gifts, too. Oh, exactly. Santa having a blast. How about that Santa in a helmet? That's it for now. Our next newscast is just an hour away at 11. Meet the Press is next. Have a great day. Stay dry. Happy Christmas Eve. Bye, everyone.